ഫീനൽ ഉലീമുറീം <tries> Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi tells a very wonderful story, a story that has many lessons for us, particularly at this time of crisis and of a calamity or an impending calamity and time of fear. Rumi tells the story that a, a noble man from the time of Suleyman al-Islam rushed into his court he looked distressed anguished fearful his his face was pale and suleyman alayhi salam looked at him and said what's the matter with you what is distressing you and he said the angel of death and suleyman alayhi salam said What do you mean the angel of death? He said, "Well, the angel of death stared at me today with a anger and a baleful eyes. He was going to catch me. He was going to destroy me. He was going to kill me. I've come to you to save me. Send me to Hindustan." You see he knew the power of Suleiman al-Islam that Suleiman had the power over winds okay and he said send me to Hindustan okay nowadays of course we fly to Hindustan India eh but Suleiman al-Islam had a unique power the winds were under his control the Quran talks about that actually and okay Suleiman al-Islam said you my friend and one of my disciples I'll let you go to India so he sends him and then Suleiman al-Islam summoned the angel of death Israel and asked Israel what is this business eh why did he do this to my man he said o oh, prophet of allah i looked at him because he was in the wrong place i had come my decree was take the soul of this man but from india but i found him here so i was shocked and so i looked at him in that angry manner because he's supposed to be in india and thank you for doing this and so rumi draws a an amazing lesson i mean he was a genius of man you know this rumi it's only actually i've told you the story which is a good story but when you read what he writes that is actually what moves so i really recommend any of you who are really interested in rumi read his the details are amazing you know the way he describes the look of the angel okay and the response of this man i just you just wonder my god what is this man such a master of words eh and the beautiful translation by somebody called professor javed from oxford university is amazing you know six volumes of masnavi if you want to really read and this is the lesson uh, rumi draws from this listen he says from whom shall we flee from ourselves that's impossible from whom shall we from whom shall we snatch ourselves from god how impious is that and today you know as we face this quite a peculiar and a very strange strange crisis of a coronavirus we never had this type of you know plague on such a large scale that the 
World Health Organization had to decl declare it as a pandemic, meaning everywhere, it's everywhere. And of course, the British NHS is the world's leading health organization. Our doctors are the best trained people and the measures that they have taken uh, is, is really the wisest. So they have not banned any gatherings so far because they are looking for what is known as the herd immunity. What that means is in another six to eight weeks, nearly 70, 60, 70 percent of the people will be infected by it. And then, that is the peak of it, it's then when you want to restrict it going any further. And that is when it will be effective. And I think that's what they're trying to w wait for, to see when it peaks. And then they'll say, well, stop now. Stop these gatherings for a short period. It looks most likely in Ramazan we'll have to go through this. But at the moment, there is no restriction. However, it's t teaching us something very f wonderfully important, hygienic. Some hygiene that we Muslims should be familiar with anyway, okay? The washing of hands is something which we are always recommended to do. The way we do the wuzu, the way we wash our hands very thoroughly. You know, the wuzu is actually, in, in, in Hanfi fiqh, we're not too much about rubbing, but the malki fiqh, uh, I've just come back from Gambia where there are malkis, and you know, they can do wuzu in 200 mils. Wuzu in? 200 mils, all right? And the reason they do it is because they really rub, thoroughly rub themselves, okay? Their feet, their hands, their arms, and that's, it's, it, they regard this one of the sunnahs, okay? And, and that is required in removing, uh, you know, this virus, and also for about 20 seconds. And when you do that, you know, I suggest you read, yeah, something like, Bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shayun fil ardi wa la fis sama wa huwa samiul ali. Bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shayun fil ard wa fis sama wa huwa samiul ali. Which very simply means, in the name of Allah, okay, nothing in the heavens and the earth can harm me. Nothing in the heavens and the earth can harm me without the explicit desire of my Lord. He is the hearing. He is the knower of all. Okay, and you know that is at the end of the day that is all you can do. Okay, you know our prime minister has said that you know we should be embracing ourselves for losing some of our loved ones. What that means is, of course, those who are elderly or weak in terms of health will have to sadly face some very severe uh, you know consequences of this disease. What that means is, you know, people who are very old, frail, ill will catch it like we will catch it, but they will get the effects of it. The symptoms will come and they will feel them and they won't be able to defend themselves. Their immune system is weak. They won't be able to. Children are very strong. There's hardly any deaths in children so far. It looks as because of their very strong immune system. The immune system is very simply Allah's gift to human beings. This is where the whole idea of Latif. We say Allah is Latif. Ya Latifu, Ya Latif. Ya? Yes, Latif. What that means very simply is, you don't, you don't even know, but he's put a whole army there to defend you against these weird and very peculiar and powerful viruses like coronavirus, okay? And, you know, very soon most of us will have the immunity, no doubt about it. We will all, most of us will have immunity to, towards it, and it will be a recurring cycle possibly every year, just like any other flu happens. But... What can we do about it? What is our response to it? Okay? I think what the British government has done is, of course, one of the wisest policies and the way it's dealing with it. It's really amazing, you know, and this just shows you how, uh, you know, wonderful our NHS is and how people are able to see, you know. But at the end of the day, this is what we need to do. You know, the Quran says, والصابرين. The patient. Who are these? والصابرين في البأس والضراء وحين الباس. You know, my translation of this is, this is actually in context of righteousness. If you, know, if you want to know what is righteousness, then the righteousness is this. That one of the four things that a righteous person does, in addition to having a correct belief system, 
and worshipping Allah properly and having good social relationships is that his own personality and his own moral character and his inner being is actually very highly developed. That's the fourth characteristic which Allah mentions at the end of this very powerful verse about righteousness. Verse 177. If you really want to understand what righteousness is, read that. The fourth, you know, is Allah says, you know, righteousness is this and being patient in three situations, in illness, misfortune, and in times of hardship. These three words, and I've, I've put a little commentary on them. I call them three crises in human life. In the first one, when the Quran says, Asar fil ba'sa, 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 that is actually a developmental crisis, okay? And of course, that illness is just one of those part of that developmental. It's a normal part of our lives, you know, becoming ill and being able to cope with that illness, okay? So this is part of our developmental, uh, part of our life cycle, okay? Existential, which is what the raw. And this is about our lives, okay? And it's also about our finance. It's also about our relationships, when things go wrong there, okay? How do you cope with them, right? Are you going to be able to cope with them? And uh, And in times of accidents or situational crisis, a war, okay? Or a plague like this, okay? This is a situation which is beyond your control. You can't do anything about it, okay? And just hiding behind the doors in your home is not going to protect you, all right? And this is why at the moment, you know, we, we, we're told not to worry about this side of it at the moment, okay? And just take those other precautions. But the point is about patience. What is going to take us through this is really our patience, our resilience. And patience is about the inner thinking and inner strength. Whereas, you know, a lot of the time, what do you want? You hope it goes away. You want that? You think it, hope it goes away, okay? And that, of course, is not in your control. But what is in your control? What is inside you? In other words, how are you going to react? How are you going to bear this? How are you going to react to this dif difficult situation, okay? You've been put into this. You have wahin al bas okay? This is a war situation, okay, where this virus is attacking, all right? And you have really what the only means you can do is to have this inner strength, which of course is your immunity. And immunity actually does depend to how you behave and your attitude to things, okay? You can make this, I think I told you the story of Rumi telling a story how, how these boys made their teacher ill, okay? And so your attitude, your own thinking can actually make you ill. So thinking that I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fall ill, I'm going to fall prey to this. <laughs> well, then expect it, okay? And we are being told here to be inwardly strong. So, you know, Allah says, وصابرين. We are supposed to be people who are people of patience. You know, patience is really an interesting English word. Patient. A patient is somebody who is ill. Is he just ill? He's ill, he's hopeful, and he's waiting. He is? Waiting. And that's what patience is actually. And if you ask children what is patience, they'll say, oh, to wait. Okay, that is patience. And that is true. You have to wait. And same here. You know, we have to just wait for this whole crisis to unfold and to reach its peak and then to actually decline and finish. And in all this, you know, we need to be people who are able to control ourselves. But, you know, there are, these occasions are time for us to reflect as well, okay? And to gain that uh, patience and also to become, you know, Allah says, Ulaika ladina sadaqu. These are the truthful people. These are people who are honest. Uh, these are people, you know, who are genuine. Okay? These are people who are truly strong. And these are the muttaqoon. These are the? Muttaqoon means fearing Allah, God-fearing people. As though, you know, the fear of Allah. Not as though, but indeed, the fear of Allah protects you from the insinuations of the shaitan, from the waswas of the shaitan, and your own ego. 
and your own feelings and your own passions. You know, it's, it's the most powerful thing. You know, the fear of Allah is going to stop you from falling into those, you know, into those sinful situations, into those dangerous situations. So, you know, the, the advice here is that, you know, we need to be really patient, resilient and strong. And not to be too scared and too worried about it. Of course, take all the precautions that are being recommended and we should do that. You know, they're good for us. But at the end of the day, it is our own strong immunity, inshallah, not the doctor's medicine. I'll tell you that they have no medicine for it. Okay. The only medicine you have is from Allah, the Latif, who's going to make your immune system strong. Your immune system is going to be strong when you put your trust in Allah, that Allah is my Shafi. Allahu Shafi. Allahu Shafi, the curer, the healer, the one who will provide the real medicine. Those antibodies that are going to kill the virus, okay? That will come from Allah, the Shafi, okay? He's going to make those for you. No one else will, okay? He's going to switch on those particular genes that are going to make those antibodies which are going to fight this. And we need to put that trust in Allah, that Allah is our final redeemer. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين